Hi and welcome. This is Imogen Lamport from Inside Out Style and today I am joined with Gwen Thomas uh, who has a salon in Onago, Illinois called On Stage and she is one of my amazing Seven Steps to Style members and a hairdresser, been a hairdresser for well over 34 years I think Gwen, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> and so an amazing resource. So we've got, I always get asked a lot of hair questions and the thing is, I know I am not a hairdresser. Um, so it's one of those things that I'm always like going, well, I can answer so many kind of questions, but I don't know everything, which is why I thought I would get Gren on today to answer some of your hair questions. We've actually been sent loads of questions, very popular topic. So we thought we'd kind of break some of these questions down into like the most kind of top groups of, you know, questions around particular topics um, because you know we can feel so great when we're having a good hair day and not so great when we're having a bad hair day can't we so uh, let's start with what's the good thing to start with let's start with i mean one of the things i think that's really important is actually how to talk to your hairdresser about what you want um, because i think that can often be one of the things where it's a it's a communication issue. It's like, you know, people come back and they go, oh, I'm just dissatisfied with their hair. And and part of that is the communicating with the hairdresser, you know, like what kind of things do you want your clients to do? Is it great if they bring you pictures? Is it like, you know, is it some yeah. sort of language you that helps you actually understand them? Okay. Pictures are great because words can be misinterpreted. What you think you're saying to me and what I think I'm hearing. And usually if someone explains something to me in words, I'm going to repeat it back and go, okay, now is this what you wanted? But uh, pictures are great. Uh, pictures of what you are aiming for and pictures of what you do not want okay. um, are equally as helpful. Um, so that that starts the conversation and then you can go from that and more than one picture is good you know it you know a lot of times it's hard to find a front side and back view yeah. of the same style so uh now with pinterest people come in all the time and open up their pinterest and and show me lots of pictures but uh, that that starts the conversation that's an excellent way yeah. And is that, I mean, especially because one of the things that you, you know, I might bring in a picture and then you might look at it and look at my hair and go, your hair not going to do that. Um. And that, yes, there, there are unreasonable expectations sometimes. And actually, depending on your uh, relationship with your stylist, you might even, I have people text me pictures or message me pictures and it, uh, it eliminates some surprises when they get to the salon that if you know they've been coloring their hair black with at home with box dye and expect to go titanium blonde in you know one hour and a half visit you can head them off at the pass and go yeah that's going to take away you know lots of visits and lots of time to make that happen i think too because we see photos of like kim kardashian you know normally has black hair suddenly went platinum blonde it's like that was a wig like that could not possibly be her natural hair. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's it. yes, uh, yes. Instagram and Kim Kardashian are a challenge sometimes to <laughs> to deal with. But yeah, you're right. That's wigs. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, just um, bring pictures and don't be afraid uh, to tell them your expectations. Don't be afraid to ask uh, now. The stylist I'm going to say should have a conversation with you about upkeep and how, you know, if if you're going a drastic color change, you're going to need to be in the salon more often. Uh, they should be upfront with you about, you know, what what the monetary and time upkeep is, what the commitment's going to be. If they don't say, I don't be, I wouldn't be afraid to ask. Yeah. Um, so because uh, some things can get pretty expensive, and if you're not um, going to commit to being there, let's say a bleach situation, you really need to come see me every four weeks or so. And if you're a person that, that your life doesn't allow that, then that's not going to be a good decision. Yeah. And I think that's really important to remember because, you know, one of the things I'll notice where people say, oh, should I get some, you know, and I'm like, going, if your hair is a great color and it's not graying on, and you know, you're not trying to cover great, like if you don't have to dye your hair, I'd go, don't dye your hair because I ruin 
turns your hair to a certain extent. It's not great for it. But B, like the upkeep, the minute you start, you kind of can't stop. Can you? Yes. So like there's always in that, that upkeep, which is a lot. And so I look at a lot of, especially younger women, where I think like, you know, just leave your hair. Like it's a great colour. It's natural. It looks good on you. Like a good cut is what, you know, for you is the most important thing. Um, yeah. You know. And there are less um, less commitment colours that you, you can try if you really want to try something different. So my yeah. permanent or then my permanent oh, yeah. skin get less of a you can only add color you cannot go lighter with that yes. but but yeah i they they see those pictures on instagram and they want to try the latest thing so yeah and, and they do what, yeah i look at a lot of those you know the celebrities and you see them like radical color, color changes you go well how much wigs are being used and and they're really good wigs like these are like we're probably talking eight thousand dollar wigs we're not talking you know three hundred dollar wigs right um and also, too, like they use a lot of hair extensions and these things as well, don't they? Because uh, you, you look at them and you're going, if you were processing your hair that much, it would be falling out. Like, you know, that's yes. not normal hair. Yeah. Instagram versus reality is the, the one site that I follow. And, you know, they've got, you know, their hair clipped in the back to, you know, push everything to the front to make it big and beautiful and and yeah there's wigs and extensions and all that involved so yeah uh, we like to deal with the real life options and you know uh, but it, it the pictures do open up a channel of communication so that, yeah, that's the best thing i could say and so if you're talking color as well so pictures are also good so if somebody comes in and says i want you know like a color like so because i know a lot of people have said oh they told their hair just that they want to go chocolate brown and they've ended up with a much darker color than they wanted or that would be flattering for them. Um, because chocolate's kind of like a term that is used by hairdressers in a way, isn't it? Which is quite a dark brown. It can be, but yes, once again, pictures uh, and a picture of something that's darker than what you want to say. I don't want to be that dark. Um, yeah. Or I, I like that you can see the warmth in this or I don't want to see warmth in this. And yeah. Yeah, you know, that the, the the pictures are a great tool to have that conversation. And one of the things I've experienced over the years is I, I can't tell you how many hairdressers over the years have said, let's just warm you up. And because I've got cool colouring, the last thing I want is warm hair because it makes me look pink and ruddy. Um, why why do they want to warm me up so much? And how do I then go, no, I don't want to be I don't want to be rude, but I also don't want to end up with a hair colour that really doesn't suit me. If you say it nicely, we want to know. I would rather you tell me, no, I do not want to be warm yeah. uh, before I mix that bottle up and start applying something. Here, I'm, I'm in North America, so a lot of times in the fall when the leaves are changing and all that, people will say, oh, I, I, I want something different and warm things up for fall. And then yeah. maybe in the summer, they'll do more highlights or something like that. But yeah you're not going to hurt our feelings. We're just putting an opinion or, you know, a suggestion out there. If chances are, if that conversation is happening, you've said, I want, I'm, I'm in the mood for something different. Yeah. Um, otherwise they're probably going to say, you know, how are you liking your color? Or, you, you know, are you happy with what's going yeah. on? Do you, you know, do we need to make any changes? Yeah. And just before we leave this little topic is if you're not happy, so after it's done and you are not happy, what is the best? Because, you know, this is where I think there's an awful lot of people. It's been like in a restaurant where they go, did you enjoy your meal? And you just go, yeah, because I'm going to leave and I'm never coming back. Now, that's not good for you. Um, yeah. So what would you like people? How would you like people to kind of go, you know, this is not what I was like. And I might have thought I wanted it, but then on me it doesn't work or whatever it might be. Um. Yes, I'm not a mind reader, and I, I, if you're sitting in my chair, I want you to come back. I, you know, that's good for my business. So, yeah. I, if if you're not happy with it, nicely say, oh, I don't know about this. Chances are, well, number one, you've only you've been booked into a color slot, and that a change is probably not going to happen that same day. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times fresh color, especially um, some of the vibrant shades can look a little more intimidating yeah. before they're washed. So, you know, 
they could very well say, okay, let's send you home. We'll have you wash it a couple times. You get used to it because, you know, our eye is used to seeing, you know, ourselves in the mirror. It's like if you go super short haircut, you walk by a mirror and go, oh, oh yeah, yeah that's right. I, I cut my hair off. And a change in color is the same thing. I'm sure there's some Darwinian thing yeah. about putting us on alert, but um, it, it it takes a little getting used to. So if you politely say, I'm, I'm not sure about this and give them a heads up, but um, chances are you're not going to get that changed right okay. immediately, but, but you open up that dialogue. Yeah. Cause I think that is one of the things that that's often the reason when people change hairdressers is because they've had a bad experience and they just go, I've got to find somebody else because I can't go back. And then there's this, you know, it's like, I've got to break yeah. up with my hairdresser and it's like, it's a messy it, divorce. Yeah, it's it's sticky and it's like like i said you're not yes i want you to love it the first time i do it every time but yeah. you're not going to hurt my feelings i i would much rather you tell me what you're unhappy with and give me a chance to fix it than to uh, you know oh you just ghost me and i never see yeah. you again <laughs> i go oh what was that about yeah so yeah and you'll never become a better hairdresser if you never find out what people don't like. I mean, I think exactly. that's also. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it may be just the same as the picture that they brought in, but as you said, once you see it on. And so that, that gets a little, okay, do you charge to change that if I gave you what you wanted? Yeah. If, if, I, if I do something and it doesn't turn out, then I'm, I'm going to say, come back as soon as I can get you in and we're going to work on this. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. a, a situation to situation yeah. um, judgment call. Yeah. And, and I think this is one of those things. It's, it's like, you're going, uh, you know, and, and this is where I suppose is the, as you as a hairdresser, if somebody brings in a photo and says, I want this style or whatever, and then you go, okay, well, let's just look at the differences between you. She's got a short face and you've got a long face. So it's not going to be the same. Uh, it, it's going to look different because you got you know like do you then adapt it to suit that person or what what's your kind of way of working with that yes, yes. Um, you might change the the length if they if they have a really round face and they've brought me in some chin length bob yes. I'll say how about if we you know bring that a little longer that it's not you know it's making the horizontal line yes. where you don't need it uh, or um, if they have an oblong face, maybe I'll say, how about a little side swept fringe there instead of so stark or, you know, yeah. you make suggestions and, and show them some styling options. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So some of the issues that people have brought up, number one, frizz. Frizz is an issue. For frizz many was a hot topic. <laughs> it's a hot topic, isn't it? So, and you can have winter frizz and you can have summer frizz. Um, I certainly know, like, I don't have any frizz issues where I live, but the minute I go to a really humid environment, because I live in a dry environment, oh my God, it's like, or just like, yeah, frizz and lank, you know, just hair turns horrible. Uh, yes. Uh, and yeah, and fine hair. I mean, I'm, this is my natural curl, so mine just gets bigger, but with fuzzy texture. Yeah. So um, the, key to this and I'll, I'll I'm going to give you a link to add in the comments later. There's a great uh, holistic enchilada is uh, the, the lady that has a great um, tutorial or explains how the dew point affects frizz and why you need to use different products for summertime. Like in the winter, if it's frizzy and dry, you want to use a leave-in conditioner and you, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, so I have to refer to my notes. Um, you, you use humectants, I believe. Okay, so they add moisture. That, yeah, uh, film-forming humectants and fatty alcohols. That's wintertime frizz. For summer um, frizz, that's going to be a high dew point. And this is all, I don't want to get like into a weather science lesson, but um, it has to do with the temperature that dew forms on the grass. When it's higher humidity, the dew point's higher. So when, uh, when you have high dew points, you want anti-humectants, which are like shea butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, um, 
argon oil as an emollient, that's good. So we'll uh, put that link yeah. so people can go in and maybe read their products because there's a whole list of, of yeah. things so, good, good bad. But uh, just a couple of brand examples. So for a summer humid frizz, what kind of products have you found? Um, I, I something with or argon oil um, and. I know Redken has a spray, and yeah. I'm not going to think of the name. It's a um, it's a styling product, and yeah. it, it says right on there, argon oil is very big right now, yeah. and so you shouldn't have a hard time finding yeah. that. In, and how in about most how about winter frizz? So, what's a product you might use for winter? Okay, frizz? Um, in Redken, um, that's my salon's a Redken yeah. salon primarily, so that's a lot of these is what I'm going to be taking. Uh, One United is a leave-in conditioner, and it does a multitude of things, but in the winter, your hair is, um, it's dr the atmosphere is dry, so you're craving moisture, so you want to put that leave-in conditioner in to add moisture in. Uh, in the summertime, I would not do the leave-in conditioner because that's the problem. You're getting too much moisture, and that's causing the frizz. Okay. Um, I would also say um, any time of the year, um, if you're using uh, much product at all, about mm, every three or four weeks, I would do a clarifying treatment uh, where you rinse your hair after you wash it with um, apple cider vinegar and okay. water. It's like one part vinegar and two parts water. Just um, after you shampoo, you run that through and then let it set five minutes. So wash yourself, shave your legs, whatever, yeah. and then rinse just it. Just enjoy the shower. <laughs> exactly. And then um, you don't have to put a cap on it or anything. Yeah. And then uh, you rinse that out and that'd be a good time to do a deep conditioning treatment afterwards. But it will take any built up product because some um, the oil products particularly will tend to build up on your hair, but any of them can. And um, by doing that vinegar rinse, you will eliminate some frizz on that too. Okay, so. so is that like too with like silicon products? Because there's a lot of products that use silicon to smooth hair too. And and, and that I, that's not one of my favorites, uh, the yeah. silicone, but uh, but that will build up on your hair. So definitely if you're using something with silicon, yeah. uh, you, you want to do a clarifying treatment. Because I was looking actually, there's an awful lot with silicon in them. Like, I mean, it, it, they don't call it silicon, it's dimethicone, you know, which is its scientific yes. name, but it's that sort of thing, knowing to look on the back and going, yeah, because I try and avoid silicon things. And so many products have. Right. And, it, and this, uh, this holistic enchilada lady um, yeah. it breaks that down, and she's, she's really good about explaining what the different names are of the yeah. uh, for products. So uh, it's great to you know, get your magnifying glass yeah. out and look at the ingredient list and see if it falls into a, oh, this would be good for summer or not. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, so the that, apple that, cider vinegar. Big. So it doesn't really matter. Anybody should probably pretty do, do that kind of once a month sort of thing. Cause all product builds up. Cause is that why? Cause people have commented on how sometimes it's like their shampoo stops working or they like their hair products that they normally, they go, this is normally great. And it just feels like it stops working. And that's just a build up, is it? Yes, it gives you a fresh start. I do recommend a uh, non-sulfite shampoo. Um, yeah. a, a lot of times for color-treated um, hair, the color-treated shampoos are sulfate-free most yeah. often anymore, but um, they don't take that buildup off as well. And another thing while we're talking about sulfate-free, uh, as those are becoming more popular, some of my clients will try them and they'll go oh it just doesn't lather up and that's the sulfates are what makes it lather yeah. um but it's still getting your hair clean yeah. however i would say you need to remember to manipulate your hair and you know everybody loves a good shampoo at the salon yeah. how we get in there and you're you're going to have to mechanically yeah. the the bubbles aren't doing the cleaning your fingers on your scalp that you really want to work it in. And uh, so that's just a little tip that yeah. I happen so, to think of. But, yeah, so but it's not the, the bubble, the, it, like you, the, don't, you don't have to have lots of bubbles to be cleaning your hair. And that's one of the things you'll notice in different hardnesses of water that, and I can never remember if it's soft water or hard water doesn't make bubbles in the way that soft water does. So sometimes depending where you live uh, and yes. the water um, and probably how much chlorine's in it, that too can affect how products seem to work on your hair as well, can't they? 
Yes, very much. And while you're talking about water, uh, Tina had asked about, uh, she had a question about water. Oh, how to keep gray from going yellow, especially due to well water. Um, so you could use a, a toning shampoo and or conditioner, which is going to have a blue or purple tinge to it. That's going to camouflage it. To get the well water build off, uh, off you need to clarify it. The vinegar might do it, but if it's a long time buildup, um, there's a company that called Malibu that makes a, a crystal treatment that you could do at home or can, a heavier duty one that can be done in the salon. Um, and that would pull um, the, in my part of the world, uh, we have iron in our water. So okay. if you uh, have a country well water thing, even with a softener, it the iron builds up and you know, rust is iron. So you're yeah. going to get a brassiness. Uh, in Florida, sometimes it's sulfur, I think. Um, so there's different, different parts of the world have different water issues. Yeah. But if you're seeing a buildup or a change in color, um, a Malibu treatment would be very helpful. Um, if you're not going to move and you're not getting a water <laughs> filtration system, it's going to build back up, but yeah. it would be something to put into but your routine. Well, that's good to know because, like, I'd never thought about, you know, like, because I think, you know, because we have a lot of chlorine in our water here, um, which probably makes things a bit greenish, doesn't it, over time? I think that's what... Um, it's, is it probably added by the... Yeah, it's added. The municipality. So, yeah, it, it, it probably isn't going to turn you green. It's not as no. high as what the... Oh, no, it's not like a swimming pool. Water board. But uh, it may fade color. If you're yeah. uh, adding a darker color to your hair, you may see some fading from the chlorine. So it, I've it's just- I've heard of people putting filters in their shower heads. Um, I've, I've heard about that. I've not tried it. So- I don't know uh, what it could be if you are somewhere where you have water that does discolor, like to go, can you put the filter in your shower head? Yeah, that would be something worth looking into. Yeah. Um, well, that's good to know. So apple cider vinegar and water is our, uh, our hair's best friend once every now and again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that'd be one part of the apple cider vinegar and then twice as much water. water. Yeah, excellent. Um, so, so Fritz, we've you know, talked a bit about that. Uh, going gray. Now, this is hot, hot, hot topic right now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, like it's either the... I don't want to go gray, but of course, what do I do? I think this is one of the things there's like the, my salon's not open. I don't actually want to go gray. What do I do in the meantime? If there's something I can do there. Oh, I have decided that now that I'm not going to the salon, I'm going to embrace the gray and I'm going to go gray. And so how do you do it? Particularly when you've been dyeing your hair for a long time and you don't want like a horrible just line. You know? <laughs> yes. Okay. The, the, the salons being closed present a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, just to get you by, I would recommend there's some um, camouflage hairsprays that you can get yeah. that you, uh, a lot of them have a really concentrated no uh, nozzle and you would just pull back and where you saw the gray, just spray that in. They also make, it's almost like um, like a blush or eyeshadow powder yeah. that, that you can as well. paint and or uh, like a mascara. Those are good temporary solutions if you're caught with your salon still closed. Um, I would really recommend not doing drugstore box color. Um, you're, you could potentially create a way bigger problem than the outgrowth if, you, if you're going to keep coloring your hair. Um, if you feel like you just absolutely have to do that, um, I would look for a demi or semi-permanent color um, that, that can blend things. Um, and you're not going to do as much damage. Permanent box color, you you can create all kinds of, uh, of headaches for you and your stylist. Um, so I wouldn't recommend those. Now, if you're embracing this opportunity to go gray, and that some of my clients did, uh, we actually at my salon made up uh, little color touch-up kits for our, our clients and we used, I don't know if you have jello shots in Australia, but there are these little plastic cups with yeah, the yeah. lids. We made just a, not a small portion of their personalized formula, and I did a video of how to apply it, but just basically paint it on your, yeah. you know, your part and your temples just to get you by. So um, 
anyway, some of a couple of my clients, when I called them to say, would you be interested in, in picking one of these up? They're like, nope, I think this is the time I'm going to try to grow it out, which it was a perfect time because they couldn't get in to see me. Yeah. They're really not seeing very many people at all. So um, now that our salon's back open, I, I'm a few of them have, or yeah. I just had a couple that were doing that, but um, there it came in. And so now they have some significant outgrowth Yeah, and we, did, we did a shorter cut than what they normally do. Yeah. And um, she's just going to kind of weather the storm and, and so we're still not out and about terrible, terribly <laughs> much. So, uh, so we'll see worst case, if you really hate it, you can put the collar back on there's yeah. you know that that's always an option so would you um, recommend going for a really short cut like so i mean so I imagine i decided you know i'm going to embrace my gray i'm not ready to yet but it's going to take a long time to get that to this okay. so would it just be better to go you know have a shorter cut so it's less of a transition time or is there a way of like doing some like i can go back to my hairdresser now is there a way of like you know, dyeing it in a way that's going to allow me to go okay. straight. If it's a long-term, long-range goal, yes. Each time that you would get a touch-up, we would just lighten the formula slightly. Um, and then that would gradually get, you know, and honestly, your color blonde is going to transition to gray pretty easily because I'm, you know, it doesn't have, uh, it's not a huge change it's not if you were still coloring your hair that the dark color that you used yes. to be you decided to grow out your gray that that's going to be a other issue now you can if you're if you have darker color on um you could get some foils to break that up so it's not that solid line of yeah. uh demarcation um it just depends if you're thinking ahead or if it's like, oh, the, the, the quarantine hit and by gosh, I think I'm going to grow this out now. Um, I, a cut is going to be the best bet because I'm, have you seen people at the grocery store that have, you know, hair down to here and it's, you know, yeah. black from here down <laughs> and they've got six inches of white root. Yeah. It's like, don't look like Cruella de Vil. No. <laughs> it would be so much more appealing if it were just all white and, yeah. and a short cut than yeah. it would be um, to, to have that really outgrowth um, length. I, 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 but I, at times in my life, I've had nearly a crew cut. So a short haircut is not, not too scary to me, yeah. but I, I think that would be the, the easiest answer, but I know some people aren't comfortable with going really short. So yeah. if, um, a long-term goal, talk to your stylist, let her know that's what you're thinking. Yeah. And there's also, you can strip color out yeah. uh, in the salon. Um, and that's uh, going to be a gradual process. Also, um, I had somebody maybe a year ago that she was getting ready to retire and she decided she was not going to color her hair in retirement. And we used, some some stripping which is a little harder on here but she also brought hers up a little shorter to keep the ends in good shape and we did some deep conditioning so that's that's another option yeah i think that's one of those things it's like that yeah do i embrace gray so when is it this is one of those questions i think is like when is it time to embrace the gray is there a time or is that just such a personal opinion I think it's very personal. Um, I can remember uh, one of my clients years ago who she was probably in her seventies then, I, you know, she was saying, you know, I don't know if a friend had asked her when she was going to go gray and she colored her hair rather dark brown. And um, she's like, well, I'm not ready yet. Maybe when I get older and she passed away in her late eighties and we were still coloring her hair. We had, we had moved her to maybe a dark golden blonde color from yeah. a, a, a dark Brown, but she just, that wasn't her. I think it's very much a personality thing. Um, I know you've touched on before about, you know, our complexion changes. So if you had jet black hair as a 16 year old that doesn't mean that you need to have jet black hair now so if you want to keep coloring it i would say you definitely want to soften and lighten the color yeah. um but i there's no hard and fast rule it's a personality thing more than anything 
yeah. And as far as kind of how far we can take our hair, so if, like how much lighter and darker is it possible? And I know hair is different. This is also unique to each person. But in general, you go about how much lighter, how many shades lighter and darker can you go from your, what is growing out of your hair right now? If you're talking your natural color, yeah. you can lighten with bleach, which is a more, more of a commitment and a little yeah. bit harder on your hair. You can go seven shades seven. lighter. Wow. Um, but it really and, does ruin your hair, doesn't it? it there's ways to do it. Um, and, and newer products, Olaplex is a great um, uh, new, newish product that helps replace that protein and puts yeah. the strength back into the hair. But it's, it's a time consuming thing. And like I was saying before, if you're doing a whole head bleach, um, the outgrowth can't get more than three eighths to a half inch long. And then you need to be touching that up. Otherwise you're gonna get like orange bands in it. Yeah. I don't want to get into a whole chemistry lesson, but yeah. um, you you have to commit to keeping that up. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are also high lift tints that you can lift uh, maybe five shades with those. Um, they're less uh, harmful to your hair than bleach, but they're still pretty strong. And then uh, normal permanent hair color, you can go about three shades um lighter okay. or deposit if you're just depositing color demi-permanent color you can add color to hair but it won't lighten anything else but that's um like the most um least invasive most yeah. mild way to do it and that'll fade um gradually if you keep doing it it kind of stains the hair um but it's not really meant to cover gray but it will blend it yeah okay so as far as going darker, because one of the things I notice is that, that yet yeah, often when people dye their hair too dark, it just looks really harsh. So, you know, that, that's often you'll see it where it's like, yeah, just because you have that hair colour at 20. Like I had the black hair at 20. If mm. I dyed my hair back to back now, it looks really harsh and, you know, it does not suit my skin because I've got different skin than I had there. So when you're looking at hair colours, about how many shades darker would you recommend before it starts to look really harsh? Yeah, I, it, depending on the person's coloring, yeah. I, uh, somebody that's super fair and light eyes, I'm, it's, it's going to be very dramatic if they go black and it, it, some younger people, you know, you can pull that off. Yeah. Um, uh, it, as a more mature woman, yeah. I don't think that you want to, I really wouldn't recommend going darker than what your natural color is. I, I yeah. you could, but it's, you're going to risk that um, being too severe. So if you're looking at your, you know, your part line, say, and you're deciding, oh, you know, how much darker is it? And I took photos of mine the other day just to see what it was like before I had it dyed to go, how gray am I really? And I look at that now and I go, oh, it's pretty light. Like, you know, like I don't have, I've got a few dark hairs left, but it's right. much, much and, lighter. Um, and usually people start graying from their temples and go back and, and the nape area will be the last to, to yeah. turn gray. I did have a question. I think that was Tina. Let me find it on my, yeah. oh yeah. More gray in the front than the back. How to get an even look. Can I get highlights or will they look fake or brassy over time? Um, that's just natural that, that even, um, people that get, have natural highlights from being in the sun. Yeah. And when I foil somebody, most often we foil oh, more in the ground because that's where the sun hits. Yeah. Um, and I, and since Tina was also the person that asked me about the well water discoloring her hair, I would not recommend highlighting because um, that's going to make that hair more porous and it's going to suck up whatever minerals you have in your well water. So okay. I would not recommend doing that. Um, yeah, I I would say just live with it because that that's pretty much the how things are naturally. If you really wanted to color that back to more of a silver color, that's going to involve bleaching and then a toning situation to try to match it. And I don't think it's ever going to match it completely. I mean, I, if you're foiling it, it would blend yeah. a little bit. But I I think the uh, 
the cons out outweigh the pros. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, kind of, so really, if you're looking at going darker, we're really looking at, look at what's coming out of your head and no darker than whatever is kind of coming out of your head right. at the darkest right. and, and area. You're not just pigeonholed into one choice then, no. because I'm, I'm talking darkness, lightness level. Yeah. You can, um, you can add red, you yeah. could, uh, you could add warmth without it being red. You could, you know, there's whole families of color you know ash natural warm yeah. brown what so um if you're wanting a change i'm um i've colored my hair red for years because i'm super pale and my own hair is pretty mousy it maybe had just a red highlight but i pop with red hair yeah. uh and it looks more natural good morning sunshine oh yeah i'm kidding now i'm getting strange uh, sunlight yeah so um I, my natural color is the same depth as this, yeah. but I add the red to it. So, um, if you like I said, if you're wanting a change, look at adding some other tone, but not so much playing with going darker. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, cause it is one of those things is like, going, Oh, how much darker can I go and how much lighter and what will actually work? And of course your hair, cause that's one of the things like hair just as mentioned, is like how fast or how easily someone's hair strips. You know, like it's much, it's, you know, some people it's an easier time and other people like it's all going to break off, you know, and it'll just be a disaster. Yeah. Well, there, there, there are a ton of uh, videos right now of people call, bleaching their hair during the, the lockdown yeah. and they just pull on it and it just like, yeah. it's an old hairdresser joke. It looks like hair, but it's not <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's like not consistency it's not oh it's not a good thing to try at home no that sounds uh not like what you're you're aiming for at all is that better that's a little bit better there we go um yes yeah. so one of the other things somebody's asked about is actually somebody's commented that um she's got warm coloring transition to gray and then she said the hairdresser gave her a very ashy hair um and he didn't you know, like, so she wanted a warm gray, not a cool gray. Is there anything she could say to her hairdresser? Um, yeah. I wonder how much, what percentage of gray that she has. Or they're doing all over hair color and, and they just like maybe lightened her up and made it more ashy. Um, possibly, yeah. It's, it's hard. There's so many circumstances it's without, without seeing, seeing it. A, it's hard part. to know, yeah. Right. <laughs> but you could go for instead of saying that you want a gray because really you think of gray and that's going to be a yeah. cool sh but but you could go with a, a light warm blonde um the pearly to, beigey right yeah champagne or um something with a little bit of warmth and um even as what she got she should be able to like have a glaze put over the top of it um to, to warm it up a little bit, uh, like with a demi-permanent color yeah. that would make it shiny and glossy and you could add some warmth. I, that would be a fairly easy fix, I would think. Okay. Um, so hair loss, we've been asked about hair loss as well. So especially with women, uh, you know, like that, especially if we get older, hair tends to start thinning down, doesn't it? Yes, and it's scary. The first thing I say uh, to my clients if they ask me about, you know, do you notice it being uh, thinner, um, is go get a blood workup from your doctor and make sure you don't have a thyroid condition okay. because that that is a big contributor um, and you want to rule that out first thing and take, take care of your health. Um, after that, um, there are products... Um, Oh, let me get my notes. Well, Rogaine and Minoxidil are like drugstore brands. Yeah. And um, I've had some clients try them with some success, but they're, they're really messy. It's a topical thing that you put yeah. on and uh, then you have to let it dry. And they, people don't seem to stick with that because they don't like the messiness. And I think as soon as you quit using it, you know but seeing results so is that because i know of those for men is that something because often it's something that men will use it's like yes but they have it works for women as well it, there usually are two formulas and the women's is uh not as strong 
Um, mm -hmm. Now, one of our clients, her dermatologist told her, and she has extremely thin, fine hair, and her dermatologist told her that she could use the men's sometime, it, but, and she said it really, she can see a big difference. The only thing is sometimes um, she'll start getting some facial hair too. So that, that's not such a great trade off yeah. um, to, to have to deal with a little thicker than just blonde hair on your face. So yeah. um, that's an option. There are, uh, Nioxin is one of the brands of, that's supposed to clear out your follicles and, and help growth. I've seen some success with that. I don't think it, it every case is different. So yeah. it might not hurt to try something and you're not going to see results overnight because, you know, hair only will grow a quarter to a half an inch um, a month. So yeah. if, and, and from the root, that takes even longer. That's just yeah. at the surface. You're you have to re-stimulate really so, the follicles, don't you? Right. Um, yeah. So if you're going to try one of those, you need to stick with it for a number of months till if you can see maybe there's some baby hairs growing in. Uh, some people like taking uh, biotin. It's a vitamin treatment yeah. and have had improvement with that. So um, there's not a one size fits all answer, unfortunately. Is there any hair product that's going to make your thinning hair look fuller? Um, use Well, it depends on the cut too. You probably yeah. want to have some layers. So it's the, the weight of that top isn't yeah. pulling it down. Um, mousse is really good for, um, getting volume to happen it doesn't add weight yeah. and um oh and while we're talking about that um mousse especially but even gel or whatever when you put it on when you put it in your hand rub it in your hands and then almost like you're shampooing your hair you want to get it into the roots of your hair yeah. i'll see people that will take it and just plop it right on top and then work it around well that you're just adding weight up there uh, where you don't need it so you always want you can even flip upside down but you want to get it into the roots right. of your hair okay. um and i'm trying to think oh and they also make uh to disguise it um there are exfusion is one of the brand that we carry at the salon it's a powdered one lady calls it her paprika when i get it for her yeah. and it's a little shaker of uh it's protein powder and that will cling to the hair somewhat. You pick it in the shape closest to their hair, but then it also fills in at the scalp. Yeah. And, and so you don't, you're not seeing that oh, scalp yeah. shine through. I think um, color will make a big difference because if you've got dark hair, you'll see the scalp much more than if you have lighter hair, wouldn't you? So, yes. If you, if you lighten it up, you don't see that contrast. And um, if you are coloring and you get like light colored outgrowth, that's going to make it look even thinner because you're, your yeah. eye thinks you're seeing scalp rather than the okay. white hair. Yeah. So you'd want to keep up on color if, if that's where you're going. But um, that, that powder um, filler does seem um, to give people a little more self-confidence. It's, it's, it washes out every time and yeah. it, it's not, if you got caught in the rain, it wouldn't like <laughs> run down your face or anything, um, but it just helps disguise yeah. seeing your yeah. So. Um, Bernadette said, do you know how effective the red laser lights are for hair regrowth? I do not. And I think that's a, you have to go to the dermatologist for that treatment. If it's what I'm thinking of, mm -hmm. I, I really am not familiar. I haven't talked to anyone personally who's done that. Yeah. Okay. Next question is all about hair products to hold curl. So what are some good hair products? Okay, um, I personally like AG, um, this is Recoil, it's the curl cream. Um, that's what I'm using on mine currently. Um, Diva Curl makes a light defining gel, I like that. Um, once again, the weather can play a part. Some, you know, if it's in the winter time and I need moisture, yeah. I, uh, there's an LUV curl, um, product that I like using, um, the products important and the application of the, how, how you actually put it in your hair yeah. makes a big difference. Um, you, um, I never comb my hair after I get out of the shower. I keep a wide tooth comb in the shower and when I have conditioner in, I detangle it, rinse it out, 
get, I wring out my hair, but there's still quite a lot of moisture in it. You don't ever use a towel and like rough it up. Uh, you could use an old t-shirt to blot it and then get the product in. And usually I'll flip my head upside down. And then when, when the product's in your hair, you like push, push it in from the ends. And then what's left on your hands, then I'll put in with the root. But you want to push it in to fairly wet hair. Okay. Um, so application is huge. Um, there's a ton of videos of the curly girl method. Um, actually, the lady that I'm going to link to about the humectants and emollients, uh, she has curly hair videos, so you might yeah. follow those. But um, depending on the time of the year, the more humid it is, probably the stronger of a gel that you would like to use to, okay. to keep the, the curl formation. And then once it's dry, don't mess with it. Never, touch you, it. Never, you never brush or comb it uh, because it will just freeze. Get, uh, you want to keep the tendrils intact. Um, yeah. I use a diffuser to dry mine or you can let it air dry. If you use a diffuser, I should have brought mine out. You're going to load the, you know, they're cup they shaped. Like and you, yeah. And you, and you're going to push it in and then that um, makes it curl where the wave is, it's going to yeah. amplify the curl that you have. You just hold that dryer there for like a minute on warm and then maybe 30 seconds on cold to set it and then let it go. And that's it. Uh, a, a lot of people think, Oh, I want to scrunch it. One, and, and that's not, in my opinion, not the best way to do it. You just want to push that curl in and let it dry. So uh, if anybody has questions, I know Emily, said she wasn't going to be able to yeah. watch this live, but I'd be happy if they, anybody wants to message me, yeah. I can talk to them more about that. Um, so I, yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if any other questions are popping up about it, let me know. But So if someone like me, who's got kinky hair, so my hair is that sort of, it's not straight, it's not curly. I think of it as kinky. So I blow dry it straight. Like if I just don't dry it, it's, it's it's in no man's land. It's not. It, it's sadly not good, but it's quite fine. And if I put much product in it, I tend to find it just goes limp very easily, and it feels greasy. Like the next day, like it gets, like it feels like it goes greasy very quickly. Um, okay. Is there any way for me, someone like me, you go, oh, I want some curl, because so I don't have your sort of curly hair. Is there what, what way would be the best way for me to go? Oh, today I want to have curly hair. You know, you might be surprised if you put product in it and diffused it that you might get some beachy waves. Yes. It's not going to be curly, but it would be a more relaxed, wavy style. Yeah. Um, the diffuser, like I said, if there's any wave at all, it's it's amplifying that because you're pushing against it and, and yeah. almost like a roller set, yeah. you're drying it around the roller if when you do this you're yeah. drying that wave formation in so that that might be worth a try sometime when you're not going any place yeah. um uh people you can some blow dryers come with a diffuser you can buy yeah. a dustable one but i've even seen a, a tutorial where they took one of those um metal strainers like you would like a sieve yeah, like a sieve. It, it it was like mesh with a handle, and they loaded their hair in that and were drying it. And it's like, well, I guess that would work. Um, <laughs> so just for an experiment, if you don't want to go buy a diffuser, I, think I um, have one. I think it came with my hair dryer, but still, you know, it's just push it in and kind of you know count to sixty yeah. and then pull it off. So um, you might be surprised. Yeah. Um, so explanation of newer holding products like so what's the difference between hair wax clear colored paste gels pomades like how do you know which are the the right there's so many products out there like talk to your stylist <laughs> <laughs> that, that that that's they're going to give you the best recommendations yeah. um i i i think bernadette asked that question and i made some notes um Wax is going to be either waxed or water-based, but it's going to, it's designed not to really dry. So it's going to give you a fairly wet look. It can be heavy, especially if it was humid. It's probably it better might, for a very short cut. 
I more aimed at a short haircut, like some of, sort of spikiness or something. Exactly. Um, I'm afraid doing it on long hair, it would just get greasy really fast. Yeah. Um, there's color change waxes have come out. I personally haven't used them. I've talked to a couple people that have tried them with limited success. Um, but you put, uh, the hair has to be a little bit damp, it sounds like, from the things that I've read. Yeah. And you you work that through and you could either do a streak or you could do your whole head. Um, and mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of working it through yeah. and, and pulling it through the hair. Um, gel, its main purpose is going to be hold, and it, you're, you can get different strengths, everything from a, a light to a, a really heavy, crunchy hold. Um, and pomades are going to be, it's a petroleum product, and it's usually, well, it, it's either wax or water-based, uh, and it's going to give shine and luster, but once again, it can get greasy, and um, it would be probably more fit for shorter hair sure. um and then there's also mousse which uh i was saying earlier yeah. for for finer limper hair that that distributes really easily and it gives you great volume yeah. um another thing i was going to say um with your hair you were saying it gets limp on the yeah. second day um you might try a dry shampoo they have some of them yeah. that are volumizing dry shampoos and that gives it some tooth and lift. Um, some people with fine hair even use them the first day as a styling aid yeah. um, to, to give it more oomph. Okay. So, um, but really your stylist is, if there's something new that you've seen a tutorial yeah. for or something, um, you know, the internet is a great thing that, <laughs> that we, you can find out almost anything on YouTube, but yeah. uh, you could use that to, start a conversation with your stylist um but yeah. they're they should be able to make some recommendations of what would work for your hair okay um uh so and another we've had a few questions of course about going gray and then like you know your hair especially when your hair's fading and it goes really especially if you're cool toned and your hair's going warm um what are some good blue purple shampoo sort of products to try okay um I had a conversation with, I think that was Jennifer, Jennifer yeah. uh, about uh, Redken has a, a brown lights because she is a brunette and she's letting, I think she has semi-permanent color yeah. and it's fading, um, but it's getting warmer than what she yeah. wanted. That brown lights, she said she had tried a purple shampoo. Um, those are probably not depositing as much or just depositing the purple. The brown lights is made particularly for brunette hair. Okay. Uh, and that's a Redken product. There may be other lines that have that, but it's a fairly new product from uh, from Redken. So, um, then, so if you've got brown hair, look for a brown hair purple shampoo. It, it, it'll see. Yeah, uh, brown lights is the brand or is the one the one in the Redken yeah. line. But there there may be other ones. I I'm just not familiar with all the lines. Um, yeah. Redken also makes, uh, they have one, a fairly new one called Gradient, that if you have gray hair or some of my clients that were transitioning from blonde to gray and their gray was quite a bit cooler, yeah. um, we started them. So once they transitioned, it keeps their gray nice and shiny and, mm -hmm. you know, pops. Um, but it also helped to cool down if the the ends were faded and warm before they got rid of all of that hair color, um, that that's a nice one. Um, be careful in your showers sometimes. Uh, they, they can, they're, they're pretty concentrated, some yeah. of them. Um, I don't, you probably don't need to use plastic gloves unless you have really porous nails or whatever. But um, also, down. <laughs> yeah, a little bleach will fix it. Yeah. Um, you also, with those, when you're using those color shampoos, you want to lather them in your hands and then work it into okay. your hair. Um, one of my clients got some for her husband, and he was doing the, you know, man thing of yeah. plopping it right on his head, and he got a, like a lavender spot on the top of his head before we figured out 
you know, I think women usually lather it in their hands, but not having showered with many men, I didn't realize they just plop it on their head. So um, I always try to warn people now when they get that, that you want to lather it first so you don't get a really concentrated and spot. If you're doing like a purple or a blue shampoo, how long should you leave it on your head? Like, does it, leaving it on for a bit longer, like if you go and scrub, 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 wash it out, or should you go leave it for a minute? Um, usually it'll say on the bottle what yeah. it recommends. I'm, I'm thinking most of them say two or three minutes. Um, okay. Usually, yeah. And if you're using the shampoo and the conditioner, one of them's probably going to be more depositing than the other, oh. depending on the line. Yeah. Um, but read the bottles and, and follow clo close to what they say close anyway. What they say. Okay. Um, as far as growing out, like when you're going, should I go gray or not? You know, for me, I think I was about 80% gray when I decided to go blonde. So that was, and the, you know, that was kind of my defining moment where I went, oh, really, really gray. Uh, but th th that is the thing is, is or if you're going to go from, from dark to light, when, you know, when is there some sort of kind of like 20% gray, 30% gray? Like, is there some sort of time where you're going, if you're going to make some sort of shift a bit like I did, is there a, where well, it's going to be easier? So I think because I was already 80% gray when I decided to go light, it actually, I went from having to dye my hair every 10 days um, to dyeing my hair every six weeks. Yes. You know, um, so, and I, I think... I would judge it by your outgrowth and how how troublesome it is. Um, is it showing right away? If if you're having to color every ten days, I'm thinking that's a great time to <laughs> to assess that we we need to lighten this up to make life a little bit easier yeah. and, and a little lower maintenance for you. There's no formula that I've ever seen that like oh if you're twenty percent gray you need to go one shade lighter or, or whatever. Yeah. It's that's maybe more of a artist's eye of yeah. a, of judging what what's going to work with their complexion and all that. But uh, yeah, but no hard and fast rule. No but hard and fast rule. I I I would gauge it more on what your out outgrowth is yeah. looking like. Because I mean, um, like when I was like four weeks apart, I was going, that's not so bad. But when it hit that point that I felt like I needed to diet every 10 days, I went, I just can't be doing this. Like, this is ridiculous. Well, and especially if your hair is fine and you, you have it part. And yeah. it, oh, no, it's obvious. It, like curly hair, you don't notice so much. Curly hair disguises it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so it, it depends on the hair and the style and all that. But I would say it's more tied into the outgrowth yeah. differential. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to ask you? There was something there. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> oh, it comes, the thoughts come, they, they go, uh, it'll come back. <laughs> Look, I know it's such a thing, Is like this is when do I change, what do I do, all those sorts of things just drive us all nuts. Oh, because I tried actually highlights. So some years earlier, I tried highlights. And the problem was, is because I'm cool, the highlights came out too warm. Um, and so that, I kind of went, that just didn't work, which is why I kind of almost left it, solid color and then went to another basically solid color even though i have some highlights every now and again um and yeah. and uh fashion kind of dictates what's in at one time or another as far as the highlighting colors um for quite a while we've seen more caramels and warm yeah. blondes but now there's that whole titanium yeah. uh silvery look so maybe things are swinging back i mean I, you in theory, you should be able to get whichever shade of blonde you want. And if, although if you had been coloring your hair that really dark, I'm guessing they were having trouble getting that old color lifted yeah. up. And that's probably why you had that warmth. If you had stayed with it, they maybe could have um, actually got it a little cooler eventually, but it yeah. would have been a little bit of a process. Yeah. And I think that's the thing is going like, oh, yeah, cause I'm years and years worth of dye on there. <laughs> Um, and I always think, so I always think it's much easier if you're warm to add the highlights to kind of tone the gray, in, you know, the gray in versus when you're cool, it is a little bit more tricky because particularly if you've been dyeing your hair darker, you will have that. Like it took me, I look back at photos now and I know I've documented it on the blog, like a good, probably eight months to get to a blonde that wasn't 
too bad. Um, right. And, and unless you were willing to do a and major I did cut. Off. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's it's been, <laughs> hair in general grows from a quarter to a half inch a month. Yeah. So that that gives you an yeah. idea of timeline of okay how long is it if i want to keep it you know chin yeah. length which might be eight inches let's say that could be a year and a half to get what's at your root down to here so yeah um now Pat, patty patricia's asked are there any do's and don'ts for where to end layers um Probably, but not hard and fast rules, but generally um, it's just like with wardrobe that if I'm pear shaped, I don't want a horizontal line across my hips. Um, if you have a really prominent nose, you don't want to, you know, add that or, yeah. um, or in the overall shape, the layers will make a difference too. So, um, if I had an oblong face, I wouldn't want probably really short layers um, creating, a, you know, a, a high elongated face shape. Yeah. It's it's more that you kind of look at the overall head sh and face shape and, and where you want to draw attention or minimize um, anytime you put that line there that's going to call attention. Somebody else had asked about the dreaded turkey neck. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, they said, could you leave your hair longer to camouflage it? Well, I guess. Look, having a side, hair does. So if you, you definitely wouldn't want to go right at chin length because no. that would, wherever your hair ends, that's kind of underlining. Um, sometimes you'll see women that look like they've never cut their hair and it's down to you know, yeah. the, the, the bottom of their back. And if, if they're a large size person, that's like drawing big old arrows to yeah. your hind. <laughs> and I always want to like tap them on the shoulder and go, would you just let me cut, you know, 10 inches off of that. Yeah. But um, so that it would, wherever it ends, it's, it's going yeah. to uh, make more prominent. So um Overall length, yeah. If if it's a little longer, I think that would soften it. Uh, I, I suppose you could like make a ponytail in front so nobody would I think see that's it. That's extreme. That would actually draw um, attention because people go, like, "Why have you got your hair like that?" <laughs> <laughs> um, or she asked about shorter and updos, and I, honestly, I don't think you should get all freaked out about. Oh, I've got a terrible turkey neck. We all look at ourselves much more scrutiny than anybody else does and if it makes you feel good to pull your hair back and let your cheekbones show you know the turkey neck be damned they'll be looking at how fabulous you look in uh, every other way so you know look at my earrings don't look at my turkey neck yes <laughs> um yeah no i know it's like i think things like but definitely having hair hang past me as well you can't see that part of my chin when i turn my head sideways so it's going to disguise it to a certain extent um, yes. If that's something that really bothers you, but of course, yeah, like it's, I think my neck looks terrible, but other people don't know, notice it in the same way. No, but just... Get, get some good neck cream and yeah. use that and it, and you know, it's, it, it'll slow things down a little bit, but you know, just, um, I wouldn't sweat the small stuff and, and let your, if you really don't like your hair long, I wouldn't let it grow long just to yeah. disguise your neck. Yeah. Easiest way to add volume, um, it, would that be giving it some curl, like putting some Velcro rollers in or something, or just a bit of mousse? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure which one. It was a very general uh, question there. Just okay, okay. Um, uh, call, was that Colleen? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. Drying upside down, getting the product in there, like I said, um, into the roots, and you can if you're blow drying flip your hair upside down um if you're air drying you can use like those little silver roller clips and kind of pull up hunks and pin pin and that gives some length um or velcro rollers are great as they're uh somebody else had asked what is the best method for the least damaging and velcro rollers would be it um when you get your hair dry 
I'd say all the way dry, maybe just you could do it a little damp. Then I would use a hairspray that has a thermal uh, dynamic to it this is uh by the sexy hair company and it's called control me and it so it's got thermal protection so it's gonna you if i was gonna use a curling iron or a flat iron or something this would protect it but it also has some hold to it Mm -hmm. so then even if you just do the crown i mean you can depending on your hair length it dictates um how big the how big a roller you need um and they're really easy um, they just stick in. You don't need to use picks. Yeah. So I would say in the morning, spray it with the hairspray, put those in, get the blow dryer, heat them up. It's almost like the same principle as using the old hot rollers that yeah. you want to heat it and then let it cool around it. So I would heat it, maybe give it another light shot of spray and then go get dressed, get your makeup on, eat breakfast, whatever yeah. you want it to cool off and then pop those out and run your fingers through it before you take off but um velcro rollers are really easy on your hair and pretty easy once you get the hang of it i mean you can put six or eight rollers in the top of your hair pretty fast and get decent lift perfect okay what is the upkeep on dark root light and so balayage um much easier than a whole head um uh highlight um it's it's a grown out look, a uh, balayage, ombre, what, however yeah. you want to think of it. Um, I like the look where there's maybe m- like the blonde goes clear to the root in the front, and then it kind of gradually graduates. Uh, graduates that the the light is just on the ends yeah. in the back, um, and really that would just be if you want to keep those money pieces is what they call them. Um, you might go back and just get a refoil on the roots of those, but the rest of it would grow out pretty easily. If it got off tone, you might, while you're there, do a glaze um, to warm it or cool it or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it's it's a much lower maintenance than say whole head bleaching or even a whole head of foils. Yeah, okay. Um, Crazy hair colors. Natalie wants to know about the crazy hair color. So, you know, when we've got the, you know, a friend of mine went bright pink recently. And before that, she was bright blue. How do you get that? I'm assuming you have to bleach your whole head first. Uh, yeah. Unless you have uh, like gray or white hair, um, then you may not have to. And some colors have to be bleached a lighter shade than others. Um purple you don't have to take clear to to white but um pink probably you're we're going to have to otherwise that yellow is going to make orangey with the pink um so if you need to do the bleach yes the, and and a lot of our clients will do a streak of yeah. th- that rather than a whole head um it's and different colors last better purple seems to last the best and it it lightens and softens but it'll stay for a couple Mm -hmm. of months rather than pink um does not seem to last as vibrantly um it's you know it you kind of have to play around with it and your stylist may know i would suggest picking them like you would we had that whole discussion about face masks about what color should they or should they be a signature color or should they be Should they be a lip color or an eye enhancing color or whatever? Um, I I wouldn't think if you're a cool person that you would pick neon orange for your fantasy color or, um, you know, vice versa with warm and cool. But uh, it's not going to last forever. So if you don't like it, it will fade out they do um, fade out reasonably fast don't they compared to uh, like i said purple lasts about the best of the yeah. in our experience of the ones that we've played with uh, they can be really pretty and sometimes you'll see like the rainbow yeah. effect of different streaks but um I, to me that's a fun once in a while thing it's yeah. probably not a long-term commitment yeah so and there are those colored waxes now that if yeah. you wanted to play with that and there's also like colored sprays do the colored um, waxes leave a residue like do you end up going oh my god i've done a streak and now i can't get rid of it i 
would think like that apple cider vinegar rinse mm -hmm. would probably be in yeah. order. Um, they they say they wash out and they're just temporary, but yeah. I I wonder about how the feel would be on the hair that I'm thinking they pro you'd probably want to clarify after it. Yeah. And how about hair chalks? Are they just a wash out sort of thing? Um, yeah, they. <sighs> It, it, there's, you know, a lot of YouTube do-it-yourself uh, chalk things that I think there's a variance in quality and how hard they are on your hair and how long that they last. So yeah. I, I, I haven't used them much. I'll, I'll see tutorials about it. And once in a while, some junior high girl will come in and has tried it. <laughs> uh, but uh but I don't see as much of that anymore. It's more of that that colored wax seems to be the the current thing that people play with the color. And you can also do like clip and extensions in fun colors. So um, that that would be less hard on your hair because because you're going to have to bleach that hair to a pretty light color, whether it's a streak or your whole head. Um, so yeah. clipping in an extension might might be a better idea yeah, yeah. if you don't want to commit so much yes <laughs> um bonnie's asked if i want to get highlights on light ash brown hair how do you describe that to your stylist is there a name for cool highlights other than ash well, ash, ash is the word to use just ash is the word to use um cool silvery i uh, pictures would you know because her telling us that we're we're you are getting a different picture than I'm getting probably yeah. of what she's wanting. So yeah. ideally, pictures would be the great. And and please do say I I don't want warmth. I want this to be cool. Yeah. Um, but but pictures are going to be the best tool. I know when I uh, was going from the brunette to blonde, I took photos. I think it was Helen Mirren had a hair color that I really liked. I think I remember taking photos of Helen Mirren going, I like this hair color. I want it to look like that. <laughs> And that's that because we're not mind readers uh so that that's very helpful to have pictures and like i said even pictures of what you do not want that uh so so there's not uh any assumptions made that are not accurate um uh dye hair that's been dyed and it's a bit you know like it's frizzy and it's uh what's the word you know like it's dry are there any really good masks or oil treatments or things like that to use if your hair is really dry um yes um now first of all i will say there's nothing that will heal split ends if 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 your hair is breaking on the ends there's nothing that's hair going scissors. to <laughs> exactly um <laughs> you can smooth it down but something that's going to smooth that that it's severely split hair is probably going to weigh it down and yeah. make it feel heavy too. Um, there's two kinds of weakness with hair. One is you're needing moisture and one is you're needing protein. Okay. Um, protein is strength. So like if you would take say 10 strands of your hair wet and, and pull on it, if it stretches, but doesn't break right away, you, it, but it's feeling dry, you need moisture. If it, you pull on it and it snaps, you need protein. Okay. Um, um, so you'll want to tailor the mask or the deep conditioning treatment to one or the other. Uh, and overusing protein products can also make hair brittle. So okay. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine line. I mean, once or, you know, a, a mask once a week or something isn't, but sometimes people go, Crazy overboard off. thinking that they're going to heal this and yeah. then it has the opposite effect so um do that if you did that stretch test um that gives you some insight so then you would look to see if it says moisturizing or protein enhanced i know um lynn i think was using olaplex six yeah. olaplex is a protein okay. um product so that that's the biggest thing to keep in mind most of the time you apply them and um wrap them wrap them up in like plastic and a towel and let it set for a little bit um, um i really like the lonza line they have some nice um and that's oops, i dropped my notes just a second <laughs> somebody asked about um about good natural Product. Oh, hair products with yeah. uh, 
a natural ingredients, Karen, I think. Um, and that, that I was going to suggest the Lanza line for her. Um, they have a uh, healing curls defining uh, product and then a healing curls curl up cream that is a stronger hold. Um, when people ask about natural products, I know, you know, it's like, do you mean, okay, you're going to go to the health food store to buy them yeah. and they have no preservatives or yeah. uh, Lanza is a national line, but they use a lot of botanicals and um, yeah. are very earth friendly, but it's, you know, to have shelf life, you have to have some preservatives usually. So I, what I wasn't sure exactly what she meant by natural, but um, a lot of times that might mean they well, don't sell the chemical or maybe. I'm sorry, what? Without the petrochemicals. You know, yes. Like all the parabens and yes. those sorts yes. of things that can be very drying so, too, can't they? So um, that, that I, I would say, I'm not sure where Karen lives, but that yeah. might be worth looking into that lawn. So line, uh, Aveda yes. makes very nice products too, if you have an Aveda salon uh, close They're to They're all over the world. They started in Australia. <laughs> sorry. I thought maybe they did, but I yeah, no, and then yeah, they're everywhere these days. Doesn't matter where you go in the world. Um, yeah, uh, uh, heat protection. Any particularly good? So, I mean, I suppose does heat protection kind of products change depending on what sort of hair you have? Um, yes, and what you're doing. If you're, you know, a flat iron, or if you want a big bouncy beachy wave um any anytime you're using a heat appliance it would be a good thing to use something with heat protection um it um iron silk from redken is a, a pump spray that goes in it doesn't really have any hold but it's really good for um flat irons because uh -huh. that if if you think about it that's um on your hair strand a little bit longer than yeah. in a quick curl. Um, you could use that for doing curls too, but it doesn't have the hold power that, um, yeah. that say like that control me spray from big sex he has. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I would, yes, definitely. If you are using heat tools, especially every day, um, I, I, you need to be using heat protection. Um, also, when you buy those tools, you want it to have a dial that has temperature control yeah. and you want to play with it and use the lowest temperature that you possibly can that you're still getting the results that you want. Yeah. Um, I, uh, one of my clients, we, we color her base color like a medium brown, but then we do foil highlights and she got one, uh, online one of those infomercial irons and when they first came out it had no heat setting on it and she came back in uh to get her touch up and i'm like did you light the grill and like burn <laughs> off the this piece of hair and uh, right where the highlight was it yeah. was just gone yeah. and it it was too hot um for the the bleached hair and yeah. so especially if you have bleach color color treated yeah you want to be careful but bleached highlights you want to be really careful about not using too much heat because i do know ghds don't have a there's no dial on a ghd okay i'm not familiar with that brown um uh, GHD, like, good hair like so they're very well known you know okay. straightening on um, um fhi is a good brand yeah. uh that i but our international uh yeah. side of things is is makes things a little yeah. more different uh, I think those Lange ones that they advertise on all the pop-up Facebook ads, I think they, they have them. Um, the Time Iron, I think, has them. So yeah. if you don't have bleached hair, you might be okay. But if you're, if you're making a new purchase, I would definitely seek out That's one that has it. the temperature dial. Yeah. Um, so is there anything else here? Uh, I think they, that's a lot of the questions. Is there anything else you had on your list? Things that that's, I'm I'm looking over. I think that we kind of covered a lot. <laughs> I think covered we? Um, We've been talking for an hour and a half. People must be. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, I think that that was most of it. Is there any pop up questions that anybody? Uh, had? The only last one that's just come up from Jennifer is: Does ceramic or tourmaline make a difference in heat tools? Um. 
both of those are good. Um, there's there's a whole science of uh, the the ion charges uh, yeah. uh, with the tourmaline. Um, so I, I either of those would be good I, over like a metal plate, straight iron or flat iron. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, so, if you're buying a new one, I, I'd go for that. Which would you go for, ceramic or tourmaline? I think I'd go for tourmaline okay. I, if everything else was equal as far as features. But um, ceramics decent too. Okay. Bonnie's asked, does Redkin's purple mask work on light brown hair? Um, I have not tried it on, like, I don't know how light brown she's talking. Are you talking is, dark is, blonde? Are you talking mousy? Are we talking... Right. Like, I'm guessing if she's wanting to use it, I'm guessing she's got warmth that she doesn't want to see. Um, I might try it, but not leave it the full time. If it's saying to leave it three minutes, I might try it for a minute. Yeah. And, and then you can always build up. Um, it's not going to be something that's going to stain it forever. It, if anything, you might just overshoot your target and it would look a little funky till yeah. you wash it next time. But it, uh, if, if it's, yeah, the, it, it, people's idea of light brown can be yes. you know, different. But, um, she but I would think blonde, that, So dark blonde, light brown, not. Yeah, so you, you might rather go I, for purple shampoo then. I, I, purple I would, I, I would see her more using one of the purple. Uh, they, have, they have a blonde line. A blonde Redkin. line. So go for the blonde line, not the brunette line. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Laurie said, "My hair is dyed brown, but I'm growing it out. Will it turn orange as it, as the dye fades?" Well, pretty much it always does go pretty orange, doesn't it? Um, it may, depending on how much you're in the sun, depending on if it's a. Per, well, Laurie's if only a, a light brown, I think. Okay. I don't think Laurie's um, dark brown. Um, okay. The it it may you may see some warmth, and one of those toning shampoos would w probably get you by. Your stylist could always do a glazing treatment that would tone that down um, to make you feel better yeah. <laughs> about what about what's on the ends. But it's like you're probably already going to be freaked out about how much root is showing until you, you make the transition. But, um, but yeah, you could deal with the color that's on the ends. That might so the dye might is dark help. brown. I, 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 yeah. She's saying the dye is dark brown. So, so okay. maybe use that blue, that, that Redken blue shampoo. That, that yeah, probably the, the, help the, to keep. Yeah. And I'm not sure, depending on how, what percentage of gray you had sh showing, I don't know. It might tone it a little bit and make it blend with the colored ends. Yeah. Um, it would be one of those. It would be worth a try. Um, to if it's a darker brown, I think you'd be okay to use that. Um, even you could, if you're afraid, if your if your roots are really light and we're afraid of that, you could you know kind of just work it through the ends and not use it on your roots so much. Yeah. So when is it better to use a conditioner, like a cut, like a blue or purple conditioner versus a blue or purple shampoo? Like if you're just wanting the ends, it's probably better for a conditioner, isn't it? I, the shampoo I, you do at the roots. Right. I, I think, yes, that, that if you're just treating the ends, the conditioner would be a better choice. Okay. Um, and otherwise, the shampoo, prob if you're just going to use one or the other, the shampoo probably if you're using it on everything, but um, okay. a lot of them make them to work together. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. I think that's right. We'll have to come back another day, Gwen. As always, it's a hot topic. <laughs> well, like um, I said, if anybody has a more what personalized you, question okay. i'm they're welcome to inbox me and um send me a picture and and ask and i because it's it's hard to at, prescribe things abstractly yeah. we no. don't know exactly what color we're starting with and that kind of thing yeah well, we've given some good general tips hopefully so. <laughs> well that was really great thank you so much gwen for joining me today it's been really helpful um you know because there are so many things like I, I think we need another session to go how to even find it you know the, the right hairdresser for you i think there is a topic as well um because i think finding the right hairdresser but i think that's a whole whole other topic let's do it another day yeah. good question 
I uh, just had somebody that moved from, I'm in the central part of the United States and she moved to the East Coast. She just came back last weekend. Um, it was her birthday and she was coming to see family, but she reached out to me as soon as she knew she was coming and said, can I get in for a highlight? Uh, yeah. But she still hasn't found a, a stylist out there yet. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a struggle sometimes. So oh, it yeah, is. That's, it is. I know when up. I've moved and stuff, trying to like going, oh, the hairdresser's moved. I had a great hair, like I finally found a great hairdresser and then he moved to the other side of like, and I was like, oh, you know. Yeah. So okay. usually I tell people, see if you see somebody you like what their hair looks like, ask them where they go. That's, yeah, they go. Yes. <laughs> that, that, they'll be flattered and, yeah. and, and that really is um, a pretty good way to judge things judge things yes well thanks so much gwen and um we will uh, enjoyed it chat again so bye bye bye